What's up, my Facebook friends? Hi, hi, hi. Once again, there's another episode of Insights with Dean Chums. Okay, guys, we all know that the times are hard. It's really messy times. The economy is not doing well. And if you're like me, you're worried about your job, your business, you're worried about paying your bills, especially your insurance premiums, you know, and probably most of us are just focusing on getting by month by month or month to month. Um, I initially didn't want to talk about wealth, but when I was chatting with my guest today, he made a lot of sense and I thought, you know what, this is something a lot more people need to know and they need to think about wealth the way my guest, Mazuki, is thinking about wealth and think about it a bit differently. But you know what, no matter what, how bad you think the world is right now, the economy is right now, the world will recover and the world will get into a new, what they always say, the new normal and right itself sooner or later. So let's get ready to receive uh, the, what the world has to give and the wealth that we deserve when that time comes. So let me introduce to you, let me bring my, my guest, Mazuki, into the studio. Yes. Hi, Mazuki. Hi, Dean. Hey, hi. So friends, uh, Mazuki has 20 years, 22 years experience in management consulting and leadership development. And he had some shifts, some transformation in the way that uh, he views wealth and how he has transformed himself. So he is so kind to share with us his uh, new perspective on wealth. Welcome, Mazuki. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to be with you and your friends. Uh, you so and much. I hope what we are going to discuss today will be useful and beneficial. Excellent, I'm sure it will be. Okay, let's get right down to it, all right? So um, I remember when we were chatting, you say that uh, creating wealth uh, is simple, but you also say that making money is not the same as being wealthy. Like making lots of money is not the same as being wealthy. So then uh, what is your definition of the wealth? Okay. So before I go into that, just want to mention, it is not mm. my definition. Uh, okay. This definition came from the studies of first generation millionaires. Uh, these are the people that I want to follow, I want to model because they have created that track record for themselves. So mm. wealth from them, what I learned from them, are basically the things that are valuable to us. What's valuable to you? What's important to you? Uh, my life is important to me. My health is important to me. My family is important to me. So all of those things that are important to us, they are valuable to us. That's wealth. Mm. So starting from there, I begin to realize that, oh, I'm not so poor after all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a mistake that... that I made you know, previously because I measured my wealth only based on the financial perspective. Financial mm. perspective is important. It is a way, uh, it is our KPI of measuring how much potential wealth we have. However, mm. it is the gateway to all of the things that are important. So uh, import, uh, uh, it is essential for us to realize that wealth are all of those things. For me, it's the relationships that I have, is the freedom. Uh, uh, one of the freedom that I lost when the lockdown mm. happened was ah. the freedom to go for walks in my favorite forest. And when I lost that freedom, I felt unwealthy. I could really feel that. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure uh, in Singapore, when you are locked down in your homes, you are not even able to go to the mall, you can feel that lack of well-being. So when I, you lose... But I, I, just, I just want to say, you know, in Singapore, when we went to lockdown, we went crazy. Yep. Because our houses are small, all right? Mm. So it's not like in Malaysia. At least you can walk out in your compounds, you know, but we don't have compounds. So that was tough, yes. But thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah. So you're trying to say that uh, there's a difference between a rich man and a wealthy man. Mm, I mean, we use the word uh, interchangeably. Mm. So uh, how I view it is that financial wealth 
it is an important component of wealth as a whole. So mm. do not uh, just focus on the financial wealth. It is mm. important. At the same time, take into account to breathe in all of the other areas of wealth that you have. Uh, and mm. and for me, at this age, uh, health is a very it's up there. <laughs> it's the number one wealth. <laughs> number one. I yeah. wake up in the morning. I breathe in. Oh, I'm glad I'm alive today. <laughs> yes. We are glad that we are. You know, that's, that's the thing. I mean, that you don't have to be of a certain age, but as long as you, when you wake up and you can breathe, we need to feel that that is a privilege. That is something that we shouldn't take for granted, right? We should be grateful for it. Yeah. I, I'm curious. There was a time you were saying that you were making quite a lot of money and yet you said you were struggling financially. Mm -hmm. So what was happening then, now that you can look back? Yeah, uh, at, at, at that time, my finances defined my well-being. Uh, so, and because of that, I, the way that I value my wealth is through how much money I have. And with money that I have, how much I can spend. And I fell into that trap that Robert mm. Kiyosaki called the middle class trap. Mm. Uh, because the more money I made, the more I wanted to spend. And the thing about money is that the more you spend, the less you have, and the less wealthy I felt, and mm. I began working harder to get more money <laughs> mm. so that I can spend more. And I went into that vicious uh, uh, cycle of earning more, spending more, earning more, and spending more. It, it was an endless uh, nightmare for me. It is really funny that uh, as people in general, the more we have money in our bank, the more we want to use it, right? We somehow, mm -hmm. we just cannot keep it there. Mm -hmm. I remember one, one of my friends was lamenting, saying that, you know, now that it's locked down, borders are closed, say, oh, you know, I see my pay coming in and I can't travel and that's making me really itchy. So I think this is what you mean, right? Yes. Yes, uh, and, and this is what uh, we we call we call it psycho spending. Uh -huh. You spend because you are psychologically uh, uh, motivated to spend, not so much as you need it. You uh, not so much as you need what you want to spend on. But so you're trying to get that feeling, right? The feeling of uh, oh. what what is it? Tell tell me more. Uh, uh, some call it. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, retail therapy. Retail therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's about no know, uh, knowing what is it that you really need, what is it that you really want, and spend the money to the things that will give you uh, uh, access to the wealth that uh, you really want. For what I'm referring to. Let's say uh, I, I value my family and part mm. of my valuing my family is to have a home, uh, to have food to eat on the table. So I will spend the money to pay for the home, to pay mm. for the food. I don't need to go extra. So with that expenditure, it is sustaining the true wealth that I want. So I don't, I don't feel the need to spend. Hmm. It's very interesting. You mentioned that uh, we, you don't, you, I mean, because you love your family, you, they are very important to you, you're willing to spend. And then you also said, but I don't spend extra. So now the question is, how do I know I'm spending extra? Based on your own experience of uh, your managing your finances, how do you know when is that line? Where is the line? So uh, this is uh, this comes in the topic of frugality. If you are mm -hmm. familiar with the word of Stanley and Danko, millionaire, millionaire next door, they started mm -hmm. off with frugality. Frugality is not about being miserly. My mm -hmm. my my first idea of frugality is being yeah. miserly. No, it's about enjoying the life energy of whatever that you have. So, for example, the shirt that you are wearing. Mm. to enjoy the energy that the shirt gives you. And you may even wear the shirt for five, ten years. Uh, you keep wearing it uh, and you are enjoying it fully rather than 
buying the shirt, next day you feel a need to buy another shirt. So in that way, you are not enjoying the, the life energy from the things that you buy. So I don't need to spend in order to feel uh, good in using what I have. I just mm -hmm. use what I have. And once the life energy goes out, for example, uh, uh, let's say I grow wider and I can't fit into this shirt anymore. <laughs> All the other way around, let's be hopeful. <laughs> That's when I'll go for another uh, pair of shirts. So I don't need to spend in order to feel wealthy. That is psycho spending. So what you're trying to say is that we, we know that we somehow instinctively know that we are spending unnecessarily because we already have enough. Mm -hmm. But you also, I like the fact that you touched uh, the uh, misconception. Like when, when someone says that, oh, I'm being frugal, a lot of people think that he's being miserly or miserly, right? And and like stinch, stinch. So there's a difference between being frugal and stinch. Okay, so now let's go on to uh, since you 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 train on these kind of topics. What are some of the other misconceptions that you come across in, in in people that come to you for for coaching or whatnot? Yeah, the biggest myth, the biggest myth mm. in wealth creation, is that there is one secret to getting uh, rich quick. So mm. people buy into the get rich quick mm. mindset. Uh, in fact, based upon the studies of people who are first generation millionaires, it there is um, there is no one secret. Uh, I mean, I like that that movie uh, Kung like Fu that. Panda, uh, where uh, Kung Fu Panda he was fighting for that dragon scroll, uh, and when he got that dragon scroll, there was nothing on it. The thing about the secret to wealth, there is no one secret. There are many secrets. And mm. all of them are readily available to us now. Uh, so what you're saying is it's actually not a secret. No, <laughs> right? it's not a secret yeah, anymore. Yeah. I, I think because in the last 100 years, many people have studied wealth and all of these have uh, come out to us. So uh, people like uh, Stanley and Danko, people like Kiyosaki, mm. Rich Allen, and uh, they have come up with all of those principles and all that we need to do is just follow those. It's just that wealth requires nurturing. You first start with uh, uh, getting a job, creating an income, and then you begin to nurture it. So mm -hmm. there is no quick fix because you want to nurture it so that it will grow. So that's part of... Um, uh, uh, the work of uh, Rich Allen and all that. It, it, mm. So it is long term. If you go for quick fixes, that's why we we, we hear lots uh, of stories, people who suddenly come to lots of money, let's say through lottery winning, and they lose it all within, mm. uh, within a year because they don't have the skill to nurture the wealth that they have, the financial wealth that they have. Absolutely, so, yeah. Yeah, so I've heard that a lot of times. Uh, and um, what about I've I've heard people say, you know what I've I've come I come from a not well-to-do family. Uh, I don't know how to make. I never had money, so I don't think I'll ever be rich. I'll ever be wealthy. Uh, what's your take on this kind of um, belief? Uh, my take on that is that I just look around uh, around me. Uh, in Malaysia as well, and I believe in Singapore as well, mm. you can see many people who are highly wealthy today, and they started from the very bottom. Start from zero, right? They started from zero. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, uh, one of the uh, persons uh, who is considered very wealthy in Malaysia today, uh, now he owns a company that handles our waste. He started mm. as the uh, garbage collector riding on the truck at the oh, back of wow. a garbage truck and collects rubbish from our homes. He started there. Wow. So okay. Yeah. So now he owns uh, those companies, one of the big companies uh, in Malaysia today. So it doesn't require that. There is a certain discipline that we need to go through. So it doesn't take money to make money. Ah. So what it seems like is that if you want to grow your wealth in terms of the money, 
want to grow, you need to think about growing your wealth, right? You cannot just hope that one day somehow life will lead you there and don't think about it because I believe that your actions and your your movement in life goes with your thoughts. So yes. your thought drives your movement and that's how your life unfolds itself. Exactly. So like that garbage, uh, garbage collector, I think he must have looked at the whole working of that company and say, you know what, one day I could run this company, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so uh, uh, that's why when we talk about wealth, there are stages to building the wealth. And uh, many of the first generation millionaires, uh, what they are saying is that the first stage is the most important one. That is the preparation stage. How you prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, your thinking about wealth, uh, that is the most important stage because once that stage is done well, then the rest of the stages uh, follow. Uh, you move from um, the stage of preparation and then mm -hmm. finding your singularity. What is what is the value that you are going to give to the uh, to the market? So in that in the instant of that gentleman, his singularity was. Uh, garbage processing that was his singularity mm. because he started from there he learned as you mentioned he learned the tricks of the trades the the nitty-gritty of how uh, to do that and then because he was in it right he was in that whole system yeah so that's why part of uh, uh, wealth creation uh, uh, knowing your singularity you start off with your talents with your potential you start there and uh, what I keep saying to people is that if you want to be wealthy, look at what you are doing now. Look at what you are good at. Uh, look at the problems that you have faced, especially the problems that you have solved. Because mm -hmm. if you have solved that problem, somebody else somewhere has that same problem and they have not learned how to solve that. So that's potential wealth. So it comes from being. Uh, using your mind, using your ideas, using your thoughts, being wealthy on the inside. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you begin, as you mentioned, you begin to bring it outside through your skills, through your competencies, uh, the strategies that you put out in order to solve those problems. So the doing of wealth uh, comes out. Once you do, that's when you begin to have. Because we live in a world of... Uh, uh, I think it was I keep forgetting Newton's first law of motion or second law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It's one of the law of thermodynamics. So okay. it doesn't okay. matter whether it's first or second. <laughs> okay. Right. So um, it's really interesting. Uh, you said stages of uh, wealth creation. So you started off by saying that uh, the first one is a mental preparation or the mindset, right? So, uh, you know, I think um, uh, I think this the, at this point, what Pamela Wigglesworth has uh, asked is very apt. So she's saying, so now we have this problem of the pandemic, right? People are losing jobs. What would you recommend for people out of work to create wealth when they are not feeling wealthy? Okay. This, this kind of mirrors the question that I was about to ask. So okay. thanks, Pam. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Uh, I, I, I love this uh, question. Actually, there are two uh, components to that question. One is the recommendation for people who are out of work. And the other is the issue of not feeling wealthy. So for me, to handle that issue first, because mm -hmm. you cannot create wealth from the state of lack. You create wealth from the state of abundance, from the state of gratitude. So that's why you want to go into the meaning of wealth. So understanding that wealth is more than money. To be able to appreciate and be grateful for all of the elements of wealth that you have because that will instantly make you feel the wealth that you are already enjoying. And when I attended uh, uh, this uh, Inside Out Wealth program uh, about two years ago, that was my biggest uh, shock. I was undervaluing my wealth because I was measuring my wealth purely from the monetary perspective that I was not counting all of the 
through wealth that I was already enjoying, the relationships mm. that I have uh, with my family, with my friends, the work that I do that I feel so uh, passionate about, that's also part of my wealth. The moment I acknowledge all of those, then I truly felt wealthy and the state of for creating wealth is the state of gratitude. Mm. So you start being grateful for all that you have and then you work towards what you don't have. So in, in, in the case of this crisis is that uh, for many of us, me included, we don't have that money. So mm. start off from being grateful. I had uh, a refreshing shower this morning. I'm grateful that when mm. I turn the tap, water came out from the tap. Uh, I'm grateful that I just had a wonderful cup of coffee uh, and it's fresh coffee. Start off from the state of gratefulness. Because you know, once, yes. Sorry, you were saying the cup of coffee, right? So I I tend to I, I practice something that's even deeper than that, or, or more basic than that. I'll say, you know what? I own a cup. That's a big deal, <laughs> right? And I have coffee to make. Yes. And I have a cup of coffee. So yes. just going right down to the really basic things that we assume that uh, no it's no big deal but actually it is a big deal because there are people who don't even have anything not even a home not a possession they probably only have the clothes on their back that's yes it, right yeah yes yeah so at, at, at one time i used to uh, i used to complain internally to myself that after every meal i have to floss my teeth uh, to get rid of anything that's stuck inside there then i came to the point i'm grateful that i have teeth Oh, no. <laughs> and this can be said at any age right yes. <laughs> yes. so that's where we start so that once we are from the state of gratefulness then our words and our action is from the uh, carries that state of gratefulness and we are operating from abundance rather okay, than just, from lack I just want to stop you there I have a question. So yes. we hear about this word abundance very often in this kind of uh, discussions. Abundance is a very big word. So can you describe more what does abundance really mean? Hmm. Ooh, that's a big question. It's a big what question. I understand, <laughs> yeah. What I understand uh, from abundance is uh, the state, the feeling in the body that comes from the meaning that all of the things that I need in life is all, are already up, out there. Uh, mm -hmm. It is in, in abundance, I mean it is plentiful. Uh, and the only reason that I don't have access to a lot of those, for example, money, is that I have not had the right skills in order to get them. So mm -hmm. if I want them, I just need to learn those skills. So what I need, it is already out there. What I want, it is already out there. Can I just also add the, to the, the definition or the description of abundance? It just means that, you know, there is enough for everyone. Yes. So that means that, you know, uh, don't say that, oh, you know, this person has gotten, let's say in a business, oh, this person has gotten that client. So now mm -hmm. I don't have, I have one less client. No, actually, there's so many clients out there, so many projects out there that if you keep going, looking for it, it will come to you and there will be enough for everyone, no matter how, how many competitors you have. So the yes. same for the jobs. Uh, I believe that even though you may be worried about your job, you may have lost your job, you must believe that there's enough jobs out there for you and you just need to go and look for it. Yes. Right, Mazuki? Okay? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, let's say, Dean, uh, you are getting all of the clients uh, uh, for training, let's say, mm. because I'm in the area of training. Mm. So all of the clients that you got from training, you are not taking it away from me because those are the clients for you. And the only reasons I'm not getting those clients is that my marketing is not up to par, that's all. You are not taking anything from me. So that's, uh, that's where coming from the position of responsibility. So I am not laying blame on others. So I'm looking at myself. So what have I done right? And what have I not done right? And I want to learn those skills. 
I like the word, the play of word, responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> Not responsibility. <laughs> okay. Carry on, please. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so the, the first part is to, uh, to, be, uh, to accept, appreciate all of what I have because that creates that, set, uh, that uh, state of gratefulness. So that what, what I say and do comes from the state of uh, gratefulness and abundance. So the next part about uh, uh, Pam's uh, question there mm -hmm. is that, so uh, what, what recommendation that uh, can we give to the people who are out of work? So mm -hmm. that is where uh, looking into, uh, I mentioned to you the singularity, there are three elements to the singularity. Uh, first element is potential. So I look into the potentials that I have, and then uh, what part of those potential have I gained expertise and mastery? So mm -hmm. then I can bring it to the market. So there are quite a number of skills involved here. Uh, what I realize is that the uh, this is for me, okay? Uh, my weakness is when it comes to the market. I don't have those skills yet. And the only reason why my talent and skills are not reaching to the market is because I have not fully learned that skill of marketing. That's uh, all. Okay. So, uh, uh, so to take out uh, your, your, uh, your competencies and your skills and to learn the skill of how to approach the market because the, your singularity is the... Uh, is the intersect of your potential, your passion, and the market or profit. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, especially in today's day and age, uh, the, 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 the point that uh, Pamela mentioned there is that the, how we reach the market uh, is changing. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the skill that I need to continue learning because I may uh, be... Uh, uh, providing the service to a certain set of clients right now. However, since the market has shifted, then my clients uh, uh, can just evaporate. So it is not the problem of uh, uh, the market has uh, uh, doesn't want me anymore. The problem is that I don't. I'm not up to date with the way that I reach out to the market. So mm. so understanding that okay, what are the skills that I need to learn and learn that very quickly. So people who are out of work right now, uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Rajan, he's in the area of financial uh, planning. Mm. Uh, when I ask this same question, uh, he gave me a straightforward answer to me, get a job. <laughs> so, uh, so if you need to, uh, you are in business for yourself and the business uh, dry up, if you need to get a job because we have that operating expenses that we need to take care of. Mm. So if I need to get a job, I'll get a job. At the same time, looking at how I can uh, offer my value to the customers in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to COVID-19, the way that I offer my services to my clients are through face-to-face -face training. That's mm -hmm. basically all of what I did. The moment COVID-19 came, it just went up in smoke. Everything mm. just evaporated. So I need to learn how to offer my services to my clients in different ways uh, through, uh, 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 through uh, the internet, through Zoom, uh, through video recording. Uh, now I'm thinking about uh, e-books, uh, apps. So, so those are the, to me, those are scary things because I've never mm. done them before. However, I realize that I need to be responsible. I need to respond to the changing market. Excellent, excellent thoughts. Um, I just also want to bring back to the job aspect. So people who are looking for a job, you may realize at some point that, uh, hey, you know what? The previous role that I've been in may not be so suitable now going forward where everyone is doing remote and AI and machine learning is taking over a lot of the parts of my job. So this is where, like Mazuki said, you need to start adapting, right, Mazuki? You need yeah. to start adapting and adopting new competencies, new skills, so that you can stay relevant and the next uh, employer will want you. 
Mm. I think I think the job is there. It's no matter how bad the economy is, the job is there. That's what my abundance mindset is telling me. It's just that we just need to know how can we adapt to the current situation. Yeah. Um, if you don't if you don't want to adapt, then how can you blame anyone? Blame yourself first, right, for not adapting. Part of my uh, background, I, I mentioned to you in the area of uh, training, corporate training, leadership. Uh, mm. I used to do work in the area of uh, career transitions. Career okay. transitions, people who are given the uh, voluntary separation scheme uh, mm. from the company. And those companies send those people to me. I train them on how to uh, reposition themselves, redesign themselves to look for jobs mm -hmm. and one of the things that i do in this class is to get people to look back at the previous jobs and identify what are the skill sets that they have because people mm -hmm. tend to be stuck uh, with their job title i was the uh, project engineer i was the supervisor they don't realize that being a project engineer there is a host of skills that they already have so to go back to those skills and now asking the question, where can I market this skill? Instead of trying to find, let's say your previous uh, job was marketing manager, instead of finding job as a marketing manager, go into this uh, individual skills and ask yourself the question, so where can I sell this skill? Whom can I sell this skill to? And that way you realize that there is a whole lot of a market out there that you can sell your services to uh, rather than being stuck with your previous job title go into the specific skills and you realize that uh, you have more options there yeah i like what i used to say in my own employability skills training i say to them that you know what you are more than your job title yes you are more than your job scope right there's so much more to you start to acknowledge it right yeah Okay, let's uh, come back to this wealth consciousness. Now, uh, if you were to list out the habits of uh, wealth conscious people, not necessarily rich, right? So wealth conscious people, what would they be, Mazuki? Um, wealth is value. It starts with the things that we value. So when we have those value, uh, we feel ourselves wealthy. So mm. we start wealth from the inside through our thinking, our feeling, our ideas, our thoughts, and then we bring it through our behaviors. So people who are highly wealthy, they focus on their saying and doing to be valuable to others, mm. valuable to, that can, that can bring benefits to themselves and that can bring benefits to others. So to be conscious of at every moment of your time, what value am I bringing to the outer world? From my inner world, what, am, what value am I bringing to the outer world? It could be as simple as uh, walking down uh, the road, seeing uh, somebody along the roadside and you say, good morning. So you are giving something that is valuable to someone. It could be as simple as that. So true, because sometimes we overthink uh, what's the meaning of value, right? Mm. But I also like, I, I, I like what you said, because you're saying that, uh, think about what you can give, what you can give to others, to your environment, to even strangers. Uh, sometimes when we think about, you know, being wealthy, we think about what can we take? What can we take? It's like, it's always taking. But now you're also saying we have to give. Yes. It starts with giving, right? Okay. If I were to, okay, now let's say I don't have a wealth mindset. I want to develop it after listening to you. What is one thing that I can do on a regular basis, be it daily, weekly, whichever? Uh, what can I do to slowly develop this and start shifting my mindset? Okay, so uh, as, uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, the state, uh, the mental and emotional state for creating wealth is the state of gratefulness, gratitude. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that you can do is to begin this um, uh, habit of being grateful, to accept what you have, to appreciate what you have, and be grateful uh, for that. 
Because mm -hmm. from that state of gratefulness, then what comes from your mouth, what comes from your hands are things that will be valuable, things that brings benefit to others. Wow. Yeah. So as you give value to the universe, that's when the universe will bring value to you. That's a beautiful, uh, we, we are wrapping up. So that's a beautiful way to wrap up the whole conversation. Okay, so friends, if you want to talk to Mazuki more, if you want to know more about what he does, you can go to his website, www.nsnlp-academy.com. So thank you so much, Mazuki. And uh, I really, uh, it's, it's, it's really nice. Uh, you, you already make me feel wealthy because I, <laughs> I, I was saying that you're the man who makes people feel wealthy so that they can be healthy, yes. wealthy. So uh, perfect, perfect. So thank you. Uh, thank you. So yeah. I'll take you out because I have a I have a plug to do now. So uh, thank you, Mazuki, and thank I you. We will keep in touch. So friends, I just want to share with you something that I have just produced. Uh, you know, I Mazuki was saying uh, give value to people, right? So I have just produced my book. It is finally out. The publicity playbook. Yay! So I wrote this in 10 days during the lockdown and it took a good two months to produce it to this. So if you want to check out more about this, please go to the website, the publicity playbook, which is the website.com. So it is written specially for subject matter experts, uh, consultants, trainers, uh, anything. If you sell yourself by your expertise, you need to know how to promote yourself. And this book is talking about how you can get the media to feature you, not by advertisement, but by giving you interviews, contributing articles. You know that people in your industry, in other industries have been doing it. Now you can do it yourself. This is based on my 15 years of experience in public relations. So I hope you'll go there and check it out, publicityplaybook.com. Great. So have a good day. Bye-bye.